Uh, Gloucester Arts come back and win. It'll be a new club record. Never come back from more than 16 points down at half-time in the Premiership. 16-0 down to Rotherham. 18 years ago in 2004, Terry Fanalua and James Forrester with a couple of tries launched the comeback that day. What of this day? Not sure that uh, Wasps will be in the kind of mood that Rotherham must have been in back then. Anyway, we'll see. Wasps immediately on the front foot again with Willis. He's got his brother Jack for company now. Tackle! Jack Willis on uh, just before half-time for Brad Shields, who um, looked like he got a thumb injury. McDonald and Atkinson, who's one of the star performers, wrapped up but not for long by Clark. That's been taken back in. Barbary. Right, that should have been inside. four Wasps tries, but for his that was chalked yeah, off for obstruction. Cruz. <laughs> Kicking the ball for the rack. Captain wants to the advantage. They want to start, a decent start. The last thing you need is to turn over the initial kickoff. Three red. Not a lot changed so far. Penalty. Opportunity for Wasps to get back into the 22. And they spent most of the first half there. Looking down our, our, our list of numbers, Benny, in the commentary box at half-time for, um, for Gloucester Hope. There ain't a great deal down in all the, all the big ones. Wasps, three times as many carries, three times metres made, very high game line success. Gloucester forced into three times as many tackles. The young deputant, actually, Harry Taylor, has made 15 in that first half. Just Atkinson, just starting to limp around a little bit. He's got his right knee quite heavily taped. If you could just run that off. Kieran McDonald, uh, who has stood out on his debut for Wasps so far, and Cruz in control of the ball. Dan Robson aware that the right-hand touchline is getting closer. A very, very short blindside, still being patrolled by Ollie Thorley. Robson goes the other way, and Kibarigi. Three metres short, Robson gets it away quickly. There was a real opportunity, but Spink couldn't gather. And now the opportunity, Reece Samet on his way. It's a real race. Reece Samet chasing hard. Can anyone catch him? He has run from one side of the pitch to the other. He's pretty much run across the whole city of Gloucester. Always thought he was the favourite. It looked a, a decent chase at one point. But we're dealing with Lewis Reese Zamet and lightning strikes again at the start of the season. Well, that's a great finish because, as you said, under huge pressure initially from Josh Bassett, but the pace of Thorley as well to get back there. There's Thorley there, sorry, Crossdale to get back there. Just look at the angle that he has to run. He uses every inch of the turf to be able to get to that touchline and then straighten up at the end just to be able to dot over. Brilliant battle between those two, Crossdale and Rhys Samet at the end. Tries good, tries good. Well, what a finish and Lee Blackett will be absolutely going bonkers because it could so easily, if they'd made the right decision, been a five-pointer the other way. They don't and suddenly they give Gloucester a little tiny glimmer of hope and a foothold back into this game. Yeah, he's been busy polishing his reputation with Wales over the summer toward South Africa, a couple of tries in the first test. It was, it was probably worth a seven-point score, it's a 5.1, but it's definitely worth watching again. I don't think there's any other player in the league that scores this try. As Benny said, Crossdale makes up quite a lot of ground to get cl even close to him but it's a sensational finish. Brilliant try. And if the ball had gone out the back rather than to the front runner to Spink, Wasps were under the posts, walk in. Well, that, uh, that may or may not be a big, big moment. Oh, 
Ben Rashid getting animated again for the first time in a long time. Singleton, Harris. Oh, Lloyd Evans was round offering what support he could. Lost the go again, just inside their own half with Chapman. Beyond Ackerman to Craig and, oh, and now the charging run and Elrington's on his way. And now what is happening? Territory, Chapman, it's astonishing. in a game can change everything as Austin said that ball goes out the back the game's done suddenly the belief starts to come back and Elrington who's been one of the only highlights for Gloucester today cuts a brilliant line stays alive knows exactly where Tuasiri is perfect timing of the pass and Tuasiri drags in two defenders just holds Crossdale enough that he can't shift off Wow, what a start to the second half. Hastings conversion. All of a sudden, the lead's just nine. Same play, isn't it? Exactly the same play as Wasp scored from in the first half. Their ability to hold defenders, this time it's Hastings. As Benny said, Tuasui just holding the ball on long enough to give Chapman enough time to get over the line. Everything in that magnificent. The charge from Elrington, and as two is Sue is going down, Ben, to get that away to Chapman, who'd kept up. As I said, I think El Elrington's been probably Gloucester's only bright point in this game up until these last couple of plays. And now everything's starting to go their way. You just see, we showed this in the first half. Here's the try again, Nick. You get Hastings out the back, it just delays the ball, and again, Wasp defenders this time looking at two defenders, two attackers, both de both defenders re over reading the play, just enables the space to accelerate through. Look how wide Wasp are, we didn't see that at all in the first half. We didn't see their spacing that wide, they were always tighter. This is a change in energy, shift in energy in this half really quickly. 